We're going to skip ahead on the program now for a moment, and it's a special honor to recognize two people for their contributions to journalism for their sheer coverage this evening. The National Press Club selected CBS News correspondent Lara Logan and Al Jazeera's Dorothy Parvaz as winners of the John Abishan Press Freedom Award for 2011. The Abishan Press Freedom Award honors those whose actions embody the struggle to advance press freedom and open government. Each year, the club selects one domestic and one international winner each of this award. For 2011, the domestic winner is Lara Logan, the CBS News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent and the Correspondent for 60 Minutes. In Egypt earlier this year to cover the uprising against Hosni Mubarak, she was viciously attacked in Tahir Square on the night of February 11th. And two months later, she displayed her trademark courage once again in speaking about that on 60 Minutes. She said she talked about it publicly in the hope of breaking the code of silence that often surrounds such attacks. It had the desired effect. The Committee to Protect Journalists reported that her interview prompted dozens of other victims to speak out about attacks that occurred in similar mobs or as reprisals for reporting while being held in captivity. Please turn your attentions now to the video screen to see a montage of Lara's work. The biggest hurdle to getting two stories initially was being a young woman. And that was the hardest thing possible, was overcoming the um, misogyny that governs this business. During the invasion, and I had to phone my, my family and say goodbye, because I knew that there was a, I knew there was a good possibility I wasn't going to make it to Baghdad. going into those situations of danger? I think really for me it's a constant reminder of how fortunate you are in your daily life. And I believe that this is something that I was meant to do and, uh, and I believe in the importance of doing it and that's why I keep going back. Lara Logan, congratulations. I feel like I'm, I'm outclassed and everything else by Dick. I can't really follow that. Um, Dick, I tried harder. I don't know if that counts. Um, I could sit and listen to you all night. I'm sure everyone in the room felt the same thing. You feel dwarfed by, um, by what you do so well. And, uh, and I think that's what I, I still am trying to live up to that tradition at 60 Minutes and at CBS. And I'm, I'm very unfortunate to be where I am. And, uh, you know, one thing that, I, <clears throat> that I'm not sure I've been able to say enough after what happened to me in Egypt was that you grow up in this business, and let's face it, it's, uh, as a number of people have said to me tonight, it's brutal. And you sort of, you know, you have, to, you have to get used to that as normal. You expect to be screwed by everybody around you, right? Because sooner or later that's going to happen. So you, you just protect yourself against that by keeping your head down and working as hard as you possibly can and hoping that somehow you're still going to surface at the end. But um, in the wake of, of Egypt, I, um, I guess I, I kind of discovered something that I'd really forgotten and maybe overlooked and maybe um, underestimated. And that was um, when all my colleagues came out and did and said the things that they did. Um, one of the first things that happened to me was I got a box um, from someone called Ann Coulter at ABC News. And I didn't know who Ann was and I'd never met her. But then suddenly in my lap was this beautiful white box and it was filled with letters from all the uh, women who worked at ABC. And I sub subsequently received two uh, packages like that. And um, you know, suddenly uh, it was like being a newborn baby. You feel that kind of vulnerable. And everything that my colleagues came out and said about what happened to me personally, privately, publicly, all of that was just like wrapping me in a blanket and I could start 
to rebuild and find that person that was, I guess, lying in Tarrier Square somewhere. And um, I'm so grateful for that in so many ways. And I have, I have such respect for the people that I work with because I think every true journalist in their heart is exactly the same. We're all doing it for the same reason. Every person that stood up here, my mother died of MRSA. Thank you very much to you for your work. My sister actually does work in Mozambique and South Africa on HIV prevention. She's one of the people that does that. So, But all of us at our heart, we do it because we really truly believe in it. That's the journalism that survives. That's the journalism that, um, that you did, Dick, so much better than me. <laughs> if I could be as good as you, that'll be an achievement. That will be my personal achievement. Um, and I, I really wanted to say thank you to the National Press Club. Um, you took me in your arms, thank you, and recognized what I've tried to do. And, um, and hopefully, you know, I can, I can go far beyond Egypt and leave a greater contribution than that in the work that I do. But um, it means the world to me, and, uh, and it, it helped me um, rebuild. And I am very, very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lara, and you know, just a special, you know, it's so special to have this line of continuity from Mr. Hodelet to you and our, our next winner as well. One of the most important missions of the club and any NPC president is to speak actively, to issue statements as we did today when needed on press freedom issues, today's problem in Iran. And the case of our next winner was one that kept us busy earlier this year. As with Lara, we're very happy that she could join us here this evening. The international winner is Al Jazeera's Dorothy Parvaz. <laughs> she also faced terrifying treatment while doing her job, and her story also unfolded amid the Mideast turmoil that was arguably this year's signature global news event so far. She was detained on April 29th while arriving in Syria and placed in a jail where she heard the sounds of savage beatings before being sent to Iran. Altogether, she spent 19 days in detention and out of touch with her family and colleagues. Here's Dorothy's story. men being beaten to within an inch of their lives, uh, crying out, um, being locked up in cell blocks. I was handcuffed repeatedly, uh, blindfolded, taken to a courtyard, left to hear these men being beaten. They all sounded very young. They sounded to be in their late teens, early 20s. So it was uh, an overall uh, a terrifying experience. They. Uh, took me to an, the airport in Damascus, where three men forced me onto an airplane bound for Iran, where I was kept for two weeks, roughly. My thoughts, though, were, aside from being with my family and worrying about whether or not they knew where I was, were with the people in Syria and the, and the younger people I saw there. I couldn't understand the reason, not just why the men were being beaten, but there were young women. I talked to young women who had been clearly just swept up, blindfolded, and taken to these places and not being told why. They had no contact with their families either. I felt I was away from all eyes of the law. I can't describe just this dark place that I was in. It was this disused military compound, it seemed, um, away from everything. At a certain point, you want to cover your ears. You don't want to hear it anymore because it becomes that much. I mean, it seemed endless. Mid-morning to late into night, at random times, you would hear just beatings and screams and cries. and. You want to cover your ears, but someone should hear these people. Someone should understand what they're going through. Dorothy, congratulations.
before anything else, uh, Mr. Hartlett, you succeeded. Um, that should be clear. Uh, thank you so much for this honor and this privilege. I accept this not just on my behalf, but on behalf of my colleagues at Al Jazeera. We've had a heck of a time covering this Arab Spring. I can tell you that much. And to the young journalists starting out, um, if anybody tries to tell you that the press doesn't have any power, there's nothing quite like being interrogated for a few weeks about your work to make you realize that you strike fear into the heart of tyrants and that um, that is power. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you again. Thank you, Dorothy. Like Richard C. Hodelet, both of these journalists embody a special courage so necessary in telling the difficult and dangerous stories of their time around the world. Congratulations to both of you. And it's also worth remembering that according to Reporters Without Borders, 35 journalists have been killed, nearly 150 journalists imprisoned this year alone in the course of doing their job. And our thoughts and prayers are with them, their families, and their colleagues.